Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to the 32nd episode of the Sira Stories from the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In today's episode, we will learn about the bad actions and the hostilities of the Quraysh and the Jews towards Islam and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam after the battle of Badr. So let's start. When 700 people from the Jews of Banu Qainuqa were expelled from Medina, the city felt relieved. This act of the Prophet ﷺ was very important in terms of the development of Islam. If those Jews who were the source of mischief and treason had been left in Medina, they would have definitely set many treacherous plans against Muslims. Them being expelled from Medina prevented them from doing so. Peace and calm prevailed in the city of Medina. However, the security was not very good outside Medina. The bad people of Quraysh did not forget the pain of their defeat in the Battle of Badr. They did not want to forget this embarrassing defeat of theirs either. When many of the chiefs of the Quraysh were killed, a man named Abu Sufyan started to regard himself as the leader of the Quraysh. He started to make preparations in order to take the revenge from the Battle of Badr. Now, the defeat in the Battle of Badr was not the only reason for the revenge. Rather, their political influence was being challenged with the rise of popularity of the Prophet ﷺ. And on the other side, the Quraysh also felt economical restrictions as their trade caravans were under threat. All this pressure bottled up in Mecca and Abu Sufyan was aiming to impress the Arabs that Quraysh was still a military power. So Abu Sufyan made a promise that he would not fulfill any of his desires until he would revenge on the Muslims. So in order to keep his promise, Abu Sufyan approached Medina with 200 men and secretly arrived by night at the settlement of a Jewish tribe called Banu Nadir. Abu Sufyan was not brave enough to attack Medina in daylight and took his men late at night to the al Uraid cornfields, a suburb of Medina, and there they killed two Muslims and ran away. Abu Sufyan regarded that he had kept his promise by having done so and left that place rapidly before he would get caught and set off to Mecca. On hearing this news, Prophet Muhammad gathered his men, but Abu Sufyan and his men had managed to flee by then. However, Muslims achieved to capture some of the sawiq. Sawiq is a kind of barley that the Quraysh had brought with them as food. They left the bags of flour on the way because they were heavy and prevented them from running away fast. So they lightened their burden and hastened to escape. This is why this expedition is called a Saviq invasion, which occurred in Zul Hijjah 2 AH, two months after the Battle of Badr. After the previous incident, another expedition occurred when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam learned that the tribe of Banu Sulaim were mobilizing a troop to attack Medina. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded by launching a defensive strike against their base in Al Khudr, which was a watering place at that time. When the tribe heard of this, they fled leaving behind their money and livestock as spoils for Muslims. This was called Al Khudr invasion, which also occurred in 2 AH. There was another invasion called the V Amr invasion that had occurred in the month of Safar 3 AH. When the intelligence of the Prophet ﷺ informed him that the tribes of Banu Salaba and Banu Muharib were gathering troops with the aim of raiding the outskirts of Medina, the Prophet ﷺ with 450 horsemen and footmen set out to handle this new situation. Uthman ibn Affan was asked to dispose of the affairs of the Muslims in Medina. On their way, 
they captured a man who embraced Islam and acted as a guide for the army. When the enemies heard about the approach of the Muslim army, they quickly spread in the mountains and disappeared. The Muslims encamped at the watering place called the Amr for the whole month of Safar. The main reason to do this was to influence the desert Bedouins in the area to cast fear and awe into the hearts of their enemies so that they should think in the future before plotting to attack on Muslims. Later on that year, there was an expedition called the Expedition of Qarda in Jamad al-Awwal 3AH. The Quraysh sent a trade caravan to Syria by the way of Iraq. They trusted the caravan to Safwan bin Umayyah and were not overly concerned at the risks involved since the route went through Najd, which was far from Medina and the danger of the Muslim attack. When the Prophet ﷺ came to know about this caravan, he dispatched a cavalry of 200 men under the command of Zayd bin Haritha radiallahu an. As the caravan stopped at a spring named Qarda, Zayd and his men plunged down on the caravan and its travelers. Even though the men managed to flee, their possessions fell into the hands of the Muslims as did the caravan guide named Furad bin Hayyan. The booty from the caravan was worth a hundred thousand dirhams. With this raid, the Muslims had inflicted on the Quraysh an economic defeat as devastating as the one at Badr. On the other hand, due to the kind treatment of the Muslims, Furad got so impressed that he became a Muslim. Later on, another important incident is of the assassination of a man called Kaab ibn al-Ashraf. He was an influential person of the Arabs and Jews. He was the son of a pagan Arab father and a Jewish mother. He was one of the leaders of the tribes of Banu Nadir. He was known for his wealth, poetry, and personality. The assassination of Kaab ibn al-Ashraf is one of the most sensitive issues of the Sira and deserves some special attention. So we conclude today's episode here and continue with the assassination of Kaab ibn al-Ashraf in the next episode, insha'Allah. Join me in the next episode and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel Zil Noreen. Until next time, Jazakallahu Khair and Assalamu Alaikum. Uh...